with me today is friend of the show, John Cameron, and our special guest is W. Bruce Lee, president of the Sacramento Taxpayers Association. All right, gentlemen, today we are talking about allocation by budget, or money allocation by ballot. My apologies, my, my, my bees are getting, uh, getting a Biden moment there. Money allocation by ballot, is it a good idea? Is it a good idea for ballot measures and, and uh, just average citizens dictating percentages of ballots and how we dictate our, how our money is spent? Well, Rather than giving our politicians, as much as we may dislike them, um, the opportunity to have some flexibility in how they mm. are spending this money. Well, if I make two quick points, and then we'll turn it over to the expert on all this stuff. Uh, the most uh, representative democracy in, in the world and the longest running democracy in the world is Switzerland. And they do uh, an awful lot of uh, money allocation by ballot. They let folks vote on, on how military spending will go. You know, they put it to a direct vote of the people. And uh, I think if, if you, would, uh, you would compare freedom and, and efficiency and solvency in Switzerland versus the U.S., you would probably have to lean towards Switzerland. Yeah, and then, second thing, no matter what we vote for, politicians are gonna do whatever they want. They're gonna line the pockets of their friends, they're gonna drain money from the pockets of their enemies. Uh, so, in, in principle, um, I, I think that it, it has been done pretty effectively other places. Um, Based upon what I've seen of the, the education level of the typical voter in, in uh, California and the honesty of our politicians, I think it would fail miserably in, in California. So I'm talking out of both sides of my face. <laughs> but well, it you, has, it you has, are been, in California, John, has so. been very effective other places, but that other place is an outlier. Switzerland's an outlier. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. Switzerland is an outlier, and they've done a number of good things such as establishing the Swiss debt break on their mm. national debt. Uh, and we've mi failed miserably at the federal level on mm. that. And mm. that's a whole sh show. That's uh, a whole show. Uh, well, that's, that's, that's a hundred years worth of show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you know, in, indeed, letting citizens have the opportunity to vote on something uh, makes sense. It's a participatory uh, democracy in a Republican form of government. Uh, at the same time, so that, that so if you're the legislature and you say, well, let's give this, let the citizens have the final say in this, okay, well, that has some, some merit. But our typical ballot box budgeting that we hear about in California and other places in the states, it's not that. It is uh, special interest pushing forth so often a unique proposition, which is generally designed to benefit somebody mm -hmm. and perhaps themselves. Not generally, always. Yeah. And uh, there's a few sweeteners like a save the mountain lion or mm. save the whale and, and you know this good stuff we're going to do with this new tax. Mm. But there's something else that's going on at the same time. Uh, and so the voters themselves really don't have a, generally speaking, a good sense mm. of what the measures are going to do. Mm. And uh, they certainly do not have a sense of priorities mm. within the state, what the state should and should not be addressing. And here you really get into a, what I'll call a, a structural problem that we have in the state of California, and it's a prioritization problem. Mm. Yeah, if we look at the ballots just here in, in the Sacramento County, we've got Measure L, Measure B, Measure N, those are just in Sacramento, and those are all Taxes for, what is it, we've got Measure H is a hotel tax to use for tourism projects. We've got Measure B, which is supports uh, special taxes on receipts for marijuana businesses, which the government has already overtaxed to, it doesn't, you know, mm. marijuana is and, and it's going to support homeless, which is already a $10 billion industry in California. I think it's a billion dollar industry in the city of San Francisco alone. Yeah. So given, given the, the more money complex. to play with to create more homelessness is... Yeah, we've discussed yeah. the homeless industrial complex on this show a number of times yeah. and how it, it grows. And then we've got the city charter wants to allocate 40% of general funds from marijuana businesses towards youth development programs. 
whatever that means. Mm, what does that mean? I, yeah. <laughs> I, I think I know exactly what that means. It, my it, problem it means is, raising uh, socialists that can vote. Well, my problem is we every single election season we vote on a handful of these things. There's a handful of allocations. There's a handful of, of tax increases. But where does it end? Mm. I mean, at some point, we've going to have we're taxing ourselves to death. But we forget mm. that two years ago we passed a half cent tails increase. Mm. We forget that we passed a quarter sure. cent tails increase. Well, mm. And it's just a few bucks, but it's just you know you can three dollar yourself to death. Mm. And I think that's kind of where we're getting to the point is we're we're literally three dollaring ourselves to death. I don't know if you guys go to the yeah. grocery store three dollars here, three dollars there. Next thing you know, you spent three hundred bucks. Mm. Well, prices are rising, no doubt about that, and it is like the proverbial frog in the warm water, mm. and we're cooking ourselves in that regard. And the voters typically do not have a long memory about, oh yeah, we passed that tax, you know, two years ago, six years ago, and you know, we're passing some of these taxes that are going to last 30 years, 40 years, etc. Or some of them are what I call the forever taxes. Uh, and so I, I would tend to, generally speaking speak against ballot box budgeting. One, because it's abused. My first question on, on some of these proposals, now again, uh, if these are uh, put on the ballot by the local government, okay, they're just looking for coverage there, typically speaking, political coverage. Yes, they cover their backside. Their backsides. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but if this is put on by a citizen's initiative, Okay, you know, I, I have much more uh, confidence in a, a truly a citizen's initiative, but rarely do we see a citizen's initiative mm -hmm. nowadays, just like uh, the, the measure A that we were discussing here recently. You know, it's called a citizen's initiative by the proponents, but that was a measure fully funded by developers and big labor, mm -hmm. et cetera, to get a particular prize they want to get. And they add all the little sweeteners, the Christmas tree ornaments in the process to make people go, oh, gee, wouldn't that be nice type mm -hmm. thing. But it's a big, it's a big switch and bait, uh, Trojan horse, sucker's game. Yeah, they give you, they, they give you the, you know, a, what is it, a dessert at the beginning, <laughs> and then they, they're going to hand you your, your rhubarb and your whatever milkshake last. Oh, rhubarb is properly cooked and grown. It's <laughs> delicious. It is, it is. I agree it's with you. Delicious. I, I, I so if you bring it in from the cold and put it inside and then put it back out, but they don't do that out here. You were listening to me. I said your rhubarb shake. You ever had a rhubarb shake? It, it's, it's a, it's I've a, seen them shake, but uh, I've never <laughs> had one. It's, <laughs> a, it's an old internet joke about uh, rhubarb versus zucchini shakes. Mm -hmm. and see which one's better. Mm. Yeah, okay. I think yeah. we've I think we've we've <coughs> we've plowed that ground quite enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll spend more time on the internet, I guess. Yeah, I mm. guess it, it's, or less. you know me. You know, sometimes I spend too much time on well, that, strange, strange things. But it's better than spending too much time on some of these these projects. And one of the things that's really irritating me personally is we get these these tax ballots passed. We get these measures passed. And then a couple of years later, some politician will come up and say, we spent $2 million or $20 million solving this problem that hasn't been solved, and they'll pat themselves on the back for it. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't their idea to begin with, too. Just spending money on something doesn't mean you've actually done any good. Mm -hmm. It just means you've spent money. And I agree. I think the best <laughs> example, there's a great example of that, and that's, uh, you know, we have these things called forest fires in, in California, but only in federally managed land, if you look at, well, not only, because sometimes the fires grow so fierce they actually knock out some private timber, but very rarely. Um, and uh, we, we, everybody got excited about it and uh, I think gave, I don't know, a couple billion dollars for a 10-year plan. And I think they have cleaned, thinned, or done burning in about 23,000 of the eight million acres that they're supposed to do. But what they've done is hired a ton of firefighters who pay dues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's but they're, what they're not doing is paying the foresters, the people that understand forests, to go take the dead wood out because they don't pay dues and they don't give to the right political party. But they, they're spending that money, they're just not getting anything done. So I absolutely agree with you. So even, yeah. if, and even if they do allocate these budgets, like some of this, uh, the hotel tax to use for economic tourism related economic development projects, that can go to anything. All, right? mm. All some bureaucrat or some politician has to say is, well, this is for tourism, so we're going to spend it on. Well, we know what that means junkets. On some That's going to fund uh, <laughs> trips to 
Paris. It's going to fund uh, oh, trips to, to, to Iceland. Yes. Oh, yeah, oh, because man. you have to understand how those people are, are attracting so many people. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, yeah. I, I'll just throw it in. This whole idea of ballot box budgeting leads to haphazard management of the state's business and haphazard uh, allocation of funds in the state's business. And that's poor management in general. Uh, but I, I would submit, and see what you gentlemen would think about this, that the fundamental problem that we have in the state of California when it comes to funding and through the legislature is that the legislature has a total inability to set priorities. Uh, everything is the ultimate priority depending upon uh, what constituent comes into your office that day. Uh, some years ago I had a chance to speak with the uh, Speaker of the Assembly. We were down in San Diego and we had a small group meeting. And so I said, ma'am, you know, tell me, you know, so what are the priorities for the next legislative year in funding? And he said, well, you know, we got to do this, education, and we got to do this for the homeless, and we got to do this, and we got to do that, and we got to do this, and, gotta, and then she just stopped it. He said, we just got to do everything, which was to me the definition of having no priorities. You just have to do everything. Afterwards, I spoke to her and privately because I didn't want to embarrass her in the, in the, in the group. There were about 20 or 30 Oh, why not? Well, you know, uh, and I said, this is, this is not having any priorities at all, uh, which is a fundamental problem with our legislature. Uh, and, and our electeds can be very nice people, but they're not inherently intelligent people, mm -hmm. you know, by the way. So do they have a, this multi-billion dollar business called the state of California? Do they have a comprehension of that? Uh, when they see big dollar budge, budget numbers on a piece of paper, that's all it is. It's just big numbers on a piece of paper. They really don't know what does this mean. And of course, in the public sector does not have a great tradition of translating use of funds into actual productive, meaningful mm -hmm. work. Uh, and I'll just give you, I'll give you one, one example. So right now, approximately half of all general fund dollars are dedicated to education due to Prop 98 back in 1988. Education is a great thing. Although I'm not sure everyone's really pleased with the results we're getting at the education. Uh, but a lot of folks will say, well, we need more money for education. Mm. But if we need to spend something out of the general fund uh, and we're going to raise a general fund dollar, we actually have to raise two general fund dollars because one of those dollars is going to go to education. Uh, it makes it very difficult when it comes to budgeting. You really have your arms tied behind you. Part of, part of my background is in uh, state budgeting. I work for the governor's uh, uh, finance. And uh, you see this firsthand on how the budgets developed and wooed through the legislature, et cetera. And it's really only the governor, and I've worked under Democratic and Republican governors, it's really only the governor that offers any sort of semblance of priorities. No, we had to blue pencil this out or keep this, et cetera. But the legislature itself is, is really struggling with that whole area. So let me ask you a question. One of the things that has bothered me for decades, really, is people will say, we need to look at each individual issue on its own merits, on its own. But they don't exist on their own merits. They exist in this complicated mm -hmm. web of society mm -hmm. and, and yeah. other programs and yeah. other rules and laws. And so if all we do is analyze a, prop a proposal, whether it's a law, a measure, mm -hmm. or anything, mm -hmm. or regulation, just on its own merits, and don't consider how it impacts and how other things impact it, oh, that I, you know we create is actually part of what creates this problem. Well, there's the history. If you go back and look at various taxes, etc., you'll see there's a new proposal, a new tax, and uh, it could be with schools or county funding or whatever it might be. And so you take this new direction, but there are unintended consequences. You know, things sort of pop out the side. People work around the edges, et cetera. So they try new strategies and they go, oh, well, that's not quite working. Mm. So then you have a shift the direction a little bit and then there's more unintended consequences. So it's really a bumbling along in the process. Mm. You know, we haven't, <laughs> the state of California has not zero base budgeted in a long time. We've tried it. It's very difficult and maybe a little bit here and a little bit there, but overall, uh, we spend by, hey, add, th add another 5%. And of course, 
we incentivize our public agencies to spend every dollar they have, yeah. and uh, that gives them the opportunity to ask for a few dollars more. And so as has been said, obviously government exists to sort of magnify itself and enlarge itself. Well, like oh. any, any other organization, right, or any organism, mm -hmm. it's you're, you exist to continue to grow, and whether mm -hmm. it's a bureaucracy, a government bureaucracy, or a, or a uh, private sector bureaucracy. You know, IBM wants to grow, um, the state of California, their, their um, bureaucracies want to grow. They mm -hmm. want to increase mm -hmm. their, their power, their security, and it's not even necessarily power is probably the wrong word. They just no, want to secure their own existence. Power is the right word. I think they want to secure their own existence. I'd like to add two points. First, a quote, and I wish I remember who to attribute it to. There are no solutions, there are only trade-offs. Hmm. First quote. And then, um, completely lost my train of thought. So you talked about, no I didn't. We've, um, we've talked about unintended consequences, and, and I am of the opinion now that, that if you do a program for, let's say, um, war on drugs, you know, that's at a federal level, but let's call it war on drugs. Um, and the intended consequences to reduce drug crime and keep the streets safe and, and uh, uh, keep families safe and all the rest of that. And after 50 years of it, just the opposite has happened, but you, you keep doing it. You can only come to one or two conclusions. The, the, the first is that the people who are, are promoting this and continuing it are so stupid that they should not be allowed to drive a car, much less manage a billion dollar budget. Or, the most likely, is the unintended consequence is actually the intended consequence. So what they want to do is destroy, for example, the black family in, in the United States of America. Like the welfare system basically beheaded or be mailed uh, households throughout the country. That was not the intended consequence, but you look at some of the people who signed off on this and they're, before they changed their suit of many colors, what their attitude toward people of color was, you, you have to come to one of two conclusions and no other conclusions are possible. Either they're so stupid they shouldn't be dog catchers. Now that's wrong because dog catchers should be special people. Uh, or the unintended consequence is actually the intended consequence. So I think that uh, the, the underlying intend, uh, unintended consequence that they don't talk about is what you were talking about, the growth of government, the growth of bureaucracy, the, uh, the, the continuation of getting dues and funds and all the rest of that, and, and uh, taking, holding, and growing power. And I think that's it. Well, mm -hmm. well I think... Um, Disintegrated families makes com communities easier to control, and whether it's, you know, whether it's a purposeful thing or not, mm -hmm. but it's, you know, accidentally on purpose. Maybe you know mm -hmm. we'll go back to kind of the schoolyard. It's accidentally, I accidentally on purpose destroyed families. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard to know. Did they do it on purpose? Bruce, or Bruce was is eager to say something. I can it, tell. But is it even relevant? So we'll let you go, Bruce. Mm -hmm. Well, no. Is you know the the, th the thesis here is perhaps it's uh, a, a blind stupidity. Mm. or it's intentional, and there may be a middle ground there. Now, I'm, I'm a, aware of, you know, a thousand and one conspiracy theories. Mm, no, no, I'm not, I'm, not saying, yeah, I'm not saying that there are conspiracy for theories. Yeah. I don't think that when, when I talk conspiracy theories to my brother, he always asks this question. He said, John, you've met people in government. And I said, yeah. He said, do you think they can keep a secret? And my answer was no. So... I'm not saying it's conspiracy theory. No, and, there's and no, no great there's no great backroom meeting where <laughs> sit, people sit down and discuss this stuff. I'm not saying that. It, 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 it is possible that could happen. Yeah. But I look at um, there's a rule in logic, and the rule in logic is that the simplest explanation is probably the correct explanation. Mm -hmm. And so, if you had a conspiracy theory or this or that, et cetera, and it gets highly complicated and convo mm. convoluted mm. at times, you go, hmm, okay, is that the logical choice? Mm. That's why I don't believe it's a conspiracy. But okay. uh, this, uh, this, this uh, sort of this middle ground may be a muddling through. Mm. You know, I've met many uh, s state and federal bureaucrats, if you will, who believe in their cause. Mm. I, I remember talking to some educational folks one time. And I said, we know there's a lot of abuse of the uh, federal uh, subsidized food program. You know, and they blatantly said, we don't care. Mm. 
you know. As long as oh, kids get fed, As we long don't as care. kids get fed, and they were true believers, you know, and that type of thing. I said, well, okay. But you see, what's one of the issues here? It's not their money that's being used mm. in their perspective. It's someone else's money. And that's a fundamental structural issue, a lack of accountability. Mm. And that's sort of a horse of a different color, but it's related. Uh, and I'll just point out this, this area of making, true leaders have to make hard decisions. You know, Eisenhower had to come along and say, okay, is this D-Day or is that D-Day? You know, mm -hmm. what do we, way do we go? I mean, these are not easy decisions, and there's risk in this process. And, and our leadership tends to be risk adverse, uh, if at all possible. Uh, and when it comes to really tough decisions, uh, and I, I use this as an example sometimes in my classes, and this is a true example. So I know of a young man, he's 14 years old. We spend approximately $20 million a year to keep him alive one person through a genetic handicap funding program and you talk to somebody and they go oh my gosh 20 million what could i do with 20 million dollars okay well this gentleman needs one 20 million dollars a year to stay alive hmm. oh okay. now that's a hard ethical decision for some people you know that's for some people for some people and how to set priorities yeah. you know uh but uh uh, our leadership, our legislators uh, tend to shy away from that if possible. And frankly, when you have a budget that is as ginumbus, <laughs> that's not a word. It is now, ginumbus. <coughs> ginumbus. Uh, you can just throw more money at it because you'll get money someplace else. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, I do see a, a lack of ability to set priorities and a lack of accountability because you're spending someone else's money. Mm. Yeah. Well, let's go down to the bottom of our page here for a quick. Um, it's talking about cause spending money and not your own money. California businesses and workers, California state workers, have won big in a latest uh, signing bill. Uh, Newsom has signed yet another bill that essentially pays off his, his constituency, right? The mm. union members and the businesses who paid his, uh, not, not him, Newsom, blaming Newsom is actually probably exaggeration who pays for the uh, California political establishment to have, to have their voices heard, have, have had their voices heard. Mm -hmm. uh, essentially, mm -hmm. again, yeah. is what's happened, right? If, am I well, mistaken get, you, on that? Yeah. No, you got to, you know, when they pay you, you got to take care of them, you know, because he's just watering the lawn. He's paid to water. He's just using our money for it. That's all. Yeah, it's, it's part of the process, mm -hmm. unfortunately. And, you know, you may not like Jesse Unruh years ago, and he had a quote that was a little you know, blue, but you know, he says you got to take their money, you got to, you know, drink their booze, etc. And then you got to be willing to vote against them. Yeah. Uh, and I, you know, whether you like Jesse or not, Big Daddy, um, yeah, that's that's correct. Mm. You know, you, you can't become beholden to the company store, mm. which is what so many have become. Yeah. Well, I like to see there, there's there's couple of exceptions. There's a, a wonderful exception that, um, you know, um, uh, Newsom, you know, is a hardcore, ardent environmentalist. But, but even he realizes that if you, if you uh, depend completely on the vagaries of wind and, and sun without uh, having any kind of backup, and since nobody wants natural gas or coal in California, that the lights are going to go out. And if the lights go out, if the <laughs> lights go out, it means home. the lights that light up his beautiful smile on television as he stands with his gray mane going forward, they go out too. And so does his rising political star. So he thumbed his nose at the environmentalists and said, we're keeping that nuclear power plant on. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm very pleased that the anti-nuke bias throughout the country seems to be waning, you well, know, because if you want clean power, get nuke power. Well, you know? We're going to actually break a record here. We're going to kind of uh, congratulate Newsom twice here on mm. the show, because <laughs> e even on Broken Clock, Newsom rejected the mandatory kindergarten bill, which is a, a, a thing for my heart, because early education is shown to harm the long-term psychological benefits of children. It's, mm. a, it's a proven scientific fact that early Jap education Jap is harmful. In, in Japan, and I think we would love to have anywhere near their success, uh, young children are basically wild animals, basically 
not held accountable at all for anything, any kind of structure at all, until the day they are. Yeah. Until the day they are. And then they turn out the kind of math expertise that we would long for, the reading ability that we'd long for, and all the rest of that. You, you, and very young children don't even uh, uh, separate reality from fantasy and completely until they're about seven or eight years old. So asking them to learn real concepts, you know, like we want them to do At here. four and five, which yeah. <laughs> I've raised five kids. At four years old, they shouldn't be in school, at least not in what we think of academic school. Mm. They should be learning practical, you know, how their bodies work, how space and, and mm. science just and their space and physical mm. work just mm. by playing around. Yeah. You know, just go out learn, and learn enjoy through, life. Play learn some through, life. Yeah. Throw some learn through that. play. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's, and that's of course, one of the challenges that we, we don't have a lot of and today when I you don't see children going out and playing mm. uh, as they've done for generations prior to us. You know, it's uh, much more um, insular, uh, what's on the phone, and mm. let's watch TV and things like that. And uh, this, that topic's probably been talked to death. Uh, but I will say one thing about the Japanese, uh, God bless them, you'll find their children are highly respectful. Mm. And they, uh, even as, as they, you know, they cross the street, where a car stops and they let the children go across this, this, uh, the uh, walkway there. And they'll turn around and they'll, they'll bow in respect to the driver. And this mm. whole idea of cleaning up after themselves. And, mm. you know, the children can do more than just be totally wild animals. Mm. Uh, but those are standards set by, you know, the, the family, the culture, mm. and, the, uh, and modeled by the family mm. and the culture. Because values are caught more than they are taught. By nuclear families. Predominantly yeah. nuclear yeah. families. Yeah. Very agree. few single head of household families in Japan. Well, yes. Mm -hmm. And I think I, that I think the, so. those children are with the families and they're spending time with the families mm -hmm. in an environment where they can cut, catch those type yeah. of behaviors yeah. mm -hmm. rather than at a school with, you know, mixed up with 30 other kids who are running around. Or like, they can catch like, something like else. Like actual wild animals. <laughs> and you've got a education f uh, system that has so sorry, ulterior motives, at least here in, in the States, we have mm -hmm. our education system isn't actually there to educate that individual child. They're there to educate the uh, society. What is it, right? Well, mm -hmm. they consider the model citizen, mm -hmm. you know, a quote unquote what that might be. Uh, now I'm, I am I'm pro-education and, and perhaps some early education is, can be of value. I, I don't have a hard stance on that myself. But uh, the idea of uh, who's responsible for a child's education, and I strongly believe this, and I think you might too. Uh, I apologize, but we are uh, out of time. Thank you for, Bruce, thank you for being here. John, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. We will appreciate it, and we will be here next week. And please remember to love everybody. Thank you, gentlemen. Especially Good. those that do not deserve love. You have to love everybody, otherwise it doesn't work. Loving the unlovely is a yeah. challenge. Mm -hmm. But that's how life works, right? Yeah. 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 You know? It's like tolerance. You, you, the people you agree with don't need tolerance. It's no. for those you disagree with that need the tolerance. <laughs> that's <Yeah>. true. <laughs> you, 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 don't have, you don't have to listen.